Hello, in this little video I want to talk to you about being compassionate with children. Now one of the ways that we can be most compassionate with children is really understanding the causes of their behaviours and really having a really a compassionate perspective of children, in fact all human beings. Now my perspective really comes from aware parenting and nonviolent communication and in both of those models the understanding is that by nature we are compassionate, aware, present human beings who actually love to contribute and to connect and cooperate. So reading, uh, not reading this, you're watching or listening to it, I wonder if that then, then you think, but why is my child then hitting his brother? Or why, um, why won't she put her shoes on her brush or teeth? Or you know, why won't he go to sleep? And what I love to do is just to completely reframe the way that we see most child's, children's behaviours. Now the way I see children and babies is they come into the world with two main things. They come into the world, I need to be careful how I do too, don't I? They come into the world ready to fit into the family and culture that they were born into. And they come into the world wanting to stay connected with who they really are. Now this kind of, these kind of two things can often cause kind of a little bit of a dichotomy or a kind of struggle because they learn from us right from birth how we respond to their feelings in particular, you know, our beliefs about the world, how we respond to them. They internalize all of those within days and weeks. They are learning everything about the family and culture that they were born into. And yet they also have this amazing inbuilt healing mechanism and the healing mechanism is actually to heal from and release stress and trauma through laughing and through crying and through raging so with babies they ba babies have real feelings so babies sometimes have real feelings to express to us and children also have real feelings that they express through crying and tantrums the key to the healing is that we need to be present and present and with them with babies it obviously means to hold them with with children that means to be right there with them sometimes it may be holding them sometimes it may be just being right close and listening and saying I'm here I'm listening I love you this reframe really means that when that, let me speak, start again that actually babies and children they want to eat when they're hungry they want to sleep when they're tired they want to wake up when they've had enough sleep they want to cooperate with us. They want to learn to, to do the things that we want them to do. That's part of their survival. All of these things they actually want to do. They want to be loving and compassionate. That's their true nature. But if they're not um, sleeping when they're tired, if they're not cooperating when we ask them to, if they're not, um, or if they're doing things that we don't want them to do, then usually it's one of three reasons. So this is from Aletha Salter, who's the founder of Aware Parenting. I don't need to be careful about how I do three, I don't think. Um, so the first reason is they have unmet needs. So when a baby or a child has unmet needs, they have upset feelings. That's and, and an adult too, we have upset feelings that come from unmet needs. The second thing is a need for information. Obviously babies don't have this one, but children and adults do. You know, if we don't, um, if our child doesn't know that we're happy for them to draw on the piece of paper but not on the wall, they might need that piece of information. And the, but often we overestimate this. You know, how many times have you said to your child, you know, la 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 la, or they've explained, explained, they keep doing the thing over and over again. We come from a culture, a behaviorism culture, which believe that if you tell a child enough times, they will choose to do what you want them to do. But it doesn't take into account this third reason, which is, the reason babies, children and adults do things that we find unenjoyable is because of pent up painful feelings. So what happens is when we, when we feel upset but our feelings aren't heard but we're distracted or fed when we're not hungry or jiggled or rocked or um, if we're a child, you know, told that we shouldn't be upset or read a book or given a screen or any of those ways. By the way, this is all about self-compassion. So if you've done any of these things, I invite you to refrain from self-judgment. It's just more about understanding that those feelings accumulate, they accumulate, they accumulate. 
And what happens is they'll start to do things like avoid eye contact. They'll start feeling agitated because pent up feelings don't go away. If we take our child's attention away from their feelings, it may look like those feelings have gone, but all we're doing is we're taking their attention away from them. The feelings are still there, sitting there. And as those feelings accumulate and accumulate in their bodies, those are physiological things. They will start to feel uncomfortable. They'll start to be agitated and antsy. They'll start being wriggly in the night. They'll start finding it hard to sit still if they're a child. They will find it hard to make eye contact because if they make eye contact, they'll need to be present with themselves and then they will cry and we will probably try to distract them. So they've learned from us. Uh, I'm not gonna feel my feelings. Again, lots of self-compassion required here. Um, so basically these feelings accumulate, accumulate, and they lead to pretty much all the things that we find challenging as parents. They, children, Babies and children then find it hard to go to sleep when they're tired. They wake up when they're, whenever those feelings bubble up. They wake up early. They find it hard to cooperate. Um, they get antsy and agitated. They start throwing things. Um, they can hit or bite. And base is three ways of being with feelings. One is through expressing them with loving support. That's through crying, tantrums, laughter, talking, play. Those are ways of releasing the feelings so that they get released from our bodies. The second thing that can happen with feelings is we can repress them. So for babies, that's sucking a thumb, having a, a boob or bottle when they're not hungry, having dummy, um, clutching onto a soft toy or a blanket. Um, for children, that's things like nose picking, hair twirling, um, nail biting, being on a screen, reading 10,000 books all the time, um, moving around all the time. These are all ways they use to keep those feelings at bay. The third thing that happens is that those feelings turn into aggression. So for a baby, that might be they're starting to bite when they're on the boob or they're starting to scratch or pinch. Um, for a child, that might be hitting or biting or throwing things or grabbing, you know, taking things from another child or pushing or swearing. And for adults, we have the same as all of these. So for adults, um, you know, our ways of repressing are things like Facebook, Instagram, chocolate, coffee, um, alcohol, distraction, anything, anything can be a way of distracting ourselves. And for adults, aggression comes out often as um, being shaming or punitive or harsh or shouting or slamming doors. Those are all the ways that we do things. It's really remembering none of us enjoys this. This is the final thing I find most helpful to remember. Do you enjoy it when you've done something like that? you've acted out in an aggressive way or when you're repressing your feelings does it actually feel comfortable when you're scrolling instagram and just doing it because you're actually trying to avoid how you feel or does it feel comfortable when you um you maybe shout at your partner or speak harshly to your child don't want to be like that i find it's really helpful to remember all these things for children this is the kind of little tattooed on the forehead. They, um, when they behave in ways we find challenging, that's not who they really are. They're not enjoying doing that. They're not doing it deliberately. These are all the things that can go through our heads. You know, they're not doing it deliberately to be annoying. They're not doing it deliberately to hurt us. They're not doing it because they don't care about us. They're not doing it because they don't respect us. They're not enjoying it. They're doing it because these feelings are bubbling up they feel uncomfortable, they don't, that's not enjoyable for them and they're doing whatever they can to try and deal with those feelings. And most of all, the remembering that they need our help. They need our help to release those feelings in healthy ways, through crying with loving support, through tantrums with loving support, through what we call attachment play by Aletha Salter with loving support through other kinds of play, through talking, they get to express those painful feelings and then they don't need to repress them. They don't need to be aggressive and they don't need to do all these things that we find most annoying, like not sleep or you know all the other things, not cooperate. Children want to be loving, they wanna be connected, they wanna cooperate. And ever they're doing things that you find annoying, if you can remind yourself, she's not enjoying this, she's not doing it deliberately, she isn't trying to do it to hurt me. She needs my help. She's in emotional pain right now. She needs my help. Even having that as the first 
step and repeating it yourself many times can really help you then respond in compassionate ways. And if you want to know kind of tips or strategies for how to do those practical ways, uh, there are quite a lot to do. We can do preventatively, we can respond in the moment. Come and have a look at marionrose.net, that's my website. Have a look at awareparenting.com, that's Aletha Salter, the founder of Aware Parenting's website. There are lots of books, she has plenty of books about this. I've got a gazillion free and paid courses on all of this, lots of free articles, free stuff. Um, but really it's such, what I love about this approach is such a compassionate way of understanding babies, children, adults, all human beings. But not only is it compassionate, empathic, it's also effective. So we can respond in really specific ways that actually help our children stay connected to their true loving, compassionate nature. And when they, when they showing signs of accumulated feelings, we can help them return to that nature again and again and again so that they live a life where they're more generally more present more connected more compassionate more aware more cooperative more able to sleep more able to learn and take in new information um, you know all those things that we most enjoy because that's who they really are they want to be like that they actually do not enjoy the other stuff that we don't enjoy they're not doing it deliberately the paradox is they're doing it because they've, they've come into this culture where we, we often don't understand feelings. So they've learned from us to repress the feelings. And then they, when they show these behaviors, we, we get frustrated at them. So again, if we can do this without, if we can think this way without judging ourselves, it's not gonna be helpful if you're judging yourself, but if you can really remember, they've learned these ways from us. They're now trying to do the best they can with what they've learned. Um, you know, let's see as much as possible if we can be compassionate towards them. That requires a lot of self-compassion. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. Um, and I look forward to talking to you in another video. And come and have a look at marionrose.net. Okay, bye.